So what does 500 milligrams of THC feel like? Well, I can tell you that it doesn't feel good. It kind of feels like this. Okay, so it's a little over two weeks ago that I was given 10 drops of cannabis oil and the dosage was played down to me and I wasn't sure exactly how many milligrams I was taking. It was said that it was diluted and very weak and I was given 10 drops. And I have never ever taken anything cannabis related in my life. So obviously it's going to hit me harder. Um, I wasn't planning to take it. I thought the worst that can happen is I'm going to be extremely relaxed and calm. And I haven't really done a lot of research into THC and cannabis oil and the effects on what it does to you. So I took the 10 drops under my tongue, kept it there, had a bit of a bitter taste, didn't taste much else. And then afterwards found out that there was 500 milligrams of THC in those 10 drops. So I didn't know if 500 milligrams was a lot or not because I've never really put much research into the actual effects and how, what the doses are. When I read online that 500 is extremely high and I was seeing a lot of people that are regular cannabis oil users or THC users, I saw how it affected them. And I thought to myself, well, I'm either going to feel weird and go through like a sleepy zombie state or I'm just going to feel okay. So... An hour went by, I felt okay, and I decided to leave the house because I actually forgot that I'd taken it. I carried on swimming and we were doing a whole bunch of things. As I was leaving, my skin was so hot. Like, it suddenly felt like in that split second, I was fine, didn't feel anything, and the next second it just hit me. And my skin felt so hot. Like, there was aircon air blowing on me, and it honestly felt like heater air. So I went up to it and I felt it. And when I put my hand close, it felt like cold air. But as I stood back, that, that air blowing on my skin felt like I was on fire. I literally felt like I couldn't handle the heat. The next thing that happened is just almost like the world closing in and like tunnel vision. And it was just black everywhere except right in front of my eyes. And it felt like, like, like falling off a roller coaster. Like you're at the top and as you drop, it's like that whoop kind of feeling like everything closing in your stomach jumping and it was horrible i felt like whoa something's not right and then i remembered i took the 10 drops of cannabis oil and i thought to myself okay maybe it's bringing on some anxiety because i've suffered with anxiety attacks and i managed to calm myself down over the years and control it it just got worse and worse and worse my heart rate shot up so high um that it, I could feel it jumping out of my chest. And I thought, okay, it's definitely anxiety. But my the way my heart was going, it felt completely different to anxiety. So on my very, very bad anxiety attacks where I got rushed to the ER, I uh, had a heart rate of 140 beats a minute. Now, if you think about it, to put it in perspective, your resting heart rate is about 60 beats a minute. It can range between 60 to 100, but usually resting heart rate is about 67 so 140 is for me if i'm boxing or if i'm on a treadmill and i'm running or on the elliptical machine or skipping doing those intense things your heart rate is about 140. so now imagine being at a resting heart rate and suddenly shoot up to 140 where it feels like you're running on a treadmill and you're out of breath like you you're running that fast but you're not so your breathing doesn't match your heart rate your brain doesn't match your body's activity and everything's just out of sync. So that's classic anxiety symptoms. I thought to myself, I just got to calm down. So my, my heart rate shot up to 172 beats a minute. Now that's the highest I have ever seen it. Even when I've exercised and when I used to do MMA training, my heart rate never used to get to 172. I think 165 was the max I've ever seen my heart rate. I felt like my heart couldn't take it. I had this burning sensation through my chest, like almost like when the lactic acid is building up in your body and you, you're training hard and you feel like your muscle cannot take the weight. If you're lifting a little bit too heavy and it feels like your muscle is going to tear. I had that same kind of burning feeling in my chest and my heart was racing so fast. On top of that, I had this funny feeling like it was it was just like my heart couldn't cope with the, the beats per minute. 
And I lay on the bed. I got to, managed to get to the bed, and I was struggling to speak because my heart was going so crazy that uh, I couldn't get the words out. Like I was freaking out inside, and I was still with it. That's the weird thing. I didn't feel the effects of the THC besides those physical responses. Like I was, I was going through all of this, but in my mind, I'm like, just relax. It's anxiety, and even though my heart was that fast, I'm like, you're just gonna freak yourself out more. And I was talking to myself to calm myself down using my diaphragm to breathe and slow my heart rate, slow my breathing, control everything. But it just got worse and worse and worse. Um, when I checked my heart rate again, it went up to 180. And it wasn't like a panic attack where it stays high for long and then dips. It, it just stayed constantly. It, it, it dipped from 180, dipped down to 172 to 165, and it didn't go below 165. It was between 165 and 172 for about seven hours. So even though THC is considered safe, there are extreme cases where there are complications. So if your heart rate stays too high for too long, you can have a heart attack. My blood pressure was extremely high. Eventually we called the paramedics because I didn't feel like I was gonna make it. Now I've, I've seen lots of stories of people taking too much and especially if it's their first time, they think that they're gonna die and they have anxiety and freak out. I've been through so much anxiety over the years and had so many anxiety attacks where I was rushed to hospital. And this felt so different. My mind was still there. Like I, I was still thinking everything. And I honestly felt like I was I was blacking out and my heart was going way too fast and my heart couldn't take it. They called the paramedics, the paramedics came. My heart rate was still extremely high. My oxygen saturation was so low because I wasn't breathing properly. I was trying to control my breathing so much that I eventually slowed my breathing down so much that I, I stopped breathing basically. They had to stand over me and tell me to take deep breaths because I, I, I basically lost respiration and I wasn't uh, getting enough oxygen in my body. So I made a conscious effort to suck in air, but I struggled so much to breathe. It's almost like a disconnected feeling. And I have read that, so that you can become disconnected, but you don't know where you are. I knew exactly what was happening around me. I could feel every single thing. I could feel muscles in my face. I could feel the inside of my ears. I could feel all my muscles. I could feel everything it's scary because then you start feeling so lame almost like i couldn't really move much that i would try to shake myself like just like little jerks and jumps to like wake myself up because i could feel like i was slipping away into i don't know passing out or blacking out and the funny thing is in that clip where you see me laying on the bed there my blood pressure was so high it was 190 over 110 i think somewhere there and I thought I had glasses on. I felt like, you know, when you put glasses on, they're a little bit too tight and you can feel the bands on behind your ears. I could feel that. And because my blood pressure was so high, my veins were so tight that I didn't have glasses on. It was just those veins. And the whole time I thought I had glasses on because of that feeling. My blood pressure was extremely high. My heart rate was way too fast. And this lasted for seven hours. It, it still lasted longer, but after those first seven hours, those were the worst. So... Having a heart rate go that fast for that long, it can be dangerous. And having a blood pressure that high, and if it rose higher, along with that heart rate, is extremely dangerous. You could have a stroke, you can have a heart attack. It's very easy. So even though it is a natural compound, and there are no reported deaths from um, cannabis, the complications are devastating. And I've never felt that scared in my life. Through all the anxiety attacks that I had and everything that I've been through with thoracic outlet syndrome, that feeling right there was the scariest feeling I've ever had. Uh, when I had anxiety, I used to think that I was going to die. And then eventually, you know you're not going to die even though you feel like it. Where this, I just I couldn't control it. Obviously, I'd taken such a high dose that my mind was only focusing on negative things as much as I was trying to stay positive and talk myself through it. And the paramedics actually brought the stretcher. They wanted to take me to hospital if my blood pressure didn't go down. And they stayed with me for a, quite a while. Because I saw such tunnel vision and my blood pressure was so high, I, I think I just like zoned in. I honestly thought that they took so many hours to get there and it felt like it was nighttime already where in the clip you can see I'm laying there and it's, it's still early evening. I think it was 10 past six or so. So I was really like out of it. I didn't feel good at all. My whole family around me, none of them had ever seen me look that bad. I didn't see myself make it out of that. 
my heart was feeling so strained. It was about three days after that that I still felt like I couldn't do anything because just getting off the bed, walking around the house, I felt like my heart was pumping so hard, like it, like it was overused and drained from the day before. So it was just like the next week I had no energy. I lacked so much energy. I wasn't myself at all. I didn't feel good. I had the worst headache. And obviously such a high dosage was way too high for my body to handle and I had no tolerance to it. And it wasn't something that I've ever wanted to try or thought to try. So it was a stupid decision to even want to try it. And that's why you just got to be careful with what you take. Sometimes doctors will prescribe you medicines and things and they just don't work with your body. They react differently and your experiences can be totally different to somebody else. So you, everyone can be laughing and having a great time and then you are, are freaking out and having the worst time. And just now you get a complication and like I honestly thought that I wasn't going to make it and it wasn't an exaggeration because when I look back at the footage that I have, um, the way I look in the video, freaked out and not looking good at all on my high heart rate, like I felt that and I, I can still feel that. I can think about it and feel that scared feeling that I felt. And it wasn't just because I was having some weird experience from the THC. It was just, it was pure anxiety and pure fear. And uh, yeah, it's not something that I enjoyed at all. I know I should have researched first. It was one of those things that happened so fast that you make a, a stupid decision and it can affect you. It was one of those kind of things because I love to research everything down to a T before I take it. When I had my thoracic outlet syndrome, when I was on tramadol, I took like three tramadols and I threw the box away because of all the, first of all, the way it made me feel, I felt, it didn't feel like myself, it didn't take my pain away and all the side effects. So I threw it away and cured myself naturally. And this was just one of those things where it wasn't planned at all and just happened like in that split second, I was like, okay, let me just let's take 10 drops. I mean, what's 10 drops going to do? And yeah had the scariest seven hours of my life. But fortunately, I came right. I eventually managed to stand. After those seven hours, I managed to get up, stand. I felt horrible and weird and zoned out. But I, I felt a little bit more relieved and I felt like myself. I felt like everything just slowed down enough to a point where I felt I felt okay and I could I could go home. So yeah, that's my experience. Um, it's a horrible experience. Now I know there's, I've already got so many messages from people all over saying you took too much and if you want the right dose, you just message me or if you want proper CBD oil with no THC. I'm not interested in any of those things. I'm not interested in any of those kind of questions telling me that I took way too much because I know I took way too much for myself. But uh, this was just something I thought I'd share because there are so many websites that you read and, and obviously... It's promoted as a safe thing to take. And obviously, if it's measured properly and in the right dosages, then it can be safe and it can be useful for many things. But if you're just taking it and you don't have any knowledge about it and you're taking too much like I did, it can be scary and it can be dangerous. And just now, you're taking a higher dose and your body can't handle it and you end up having a heart attack or a stroke or something that could have been avoided because you didn't know enough. So I hope my experience can just help somebody make the right decision and not just take some research first. I have been struggling to train. I've been back to training maybe once or twice, but because I've been so busy at work, I haven't like got myself back into training and making videos on a regular basis. So I'll get back to making all my podcast series that I was trying to work on before all of this happened. I hope this can help somebody and at least make them think before they try something. I'll see you guys soon.